The Iron Guards of the Iron Hills stand strong in the halls of Moria and they are not alone as the Dwarves of the Iron Hills are drawn by their brethren from Erebor. As we have a glorious 3v2 here, the Dwarves may be outnumbered but they are not outclassed. Will their legions hold against the hordes of goblins and orcs? Let's find out in today's Dawnless Days Siege Battle. And oh boy, have we already got it into it already. As you can see here, some gobbos, some mountain run marauders already getting stuck on in here. As you can see again, some dwarven spears, some low tier uh, dwarves technically, but you know, still high enough quality that they can put up a decent fight against this pretty weak goblin unit themselves. So yeah, these are uh, shocking to here. Even though they're technically fighting spears, I don't know. I feel like the, uh, the goblins might have their... Uh, their work cut out here. These goblins are tier 2. Go against tier 2 spears. Maybe they'll be able to beat them. I don't know. Goblin your tier 2 usually is a lot weaker than dwarven tier 2. It looks like we have night raiders as well. Shifting forward as well. And uh, the dwarves might be able to use some archer ammo. Just to make sure that that battle does go in favour of the dwarves. But yes. What's up guys. And welcome back. We're here with some more Lord of the Rings action for you today. As we do have the dwarves here. We have 4,000 dwarves. Go up against 10,000 goblins. Numbers suggest that the dwarves vastly outnumbered, as I was saying. But uh, I would say, you know, quality-wise, they've got a good chance of winning this. The goblin troops, there may be a lot of them, but they're not necessarily that good. They are pretty uh, pathetic. They rely on numbers to try and even give themselves half a chance. But there are some decent, some de decent units amongst the uh, the goblins. There are some heavy hitters. I mean, the goblin blade warriors aren't too shabby. They're tier 3, but still definitely not uh, too amazing. What do we have over here? We have Gundabag Wargs. Alright, they brought Wargs into the uh, Mines of Moria. It seems like a strange move, but fair enough. Um, there are, as well now, some new units for uh, the Goblins. They have plenty of Trolls as well, the Mountain Trolls, but they're fairly easy to counter um, themselves, um, to be honest. So we have Goblin Blade Warriors here, Goblin King. Uh, what am I trying to find? M Mordor Uruks, obviously. A decent Shock Infantry unit as well. And if I can find them, there we go. Goblin Bodyguards. These are some more elite sort of like shock infantry. These guys are pretty scary. They're the new sort of like the newer unit that's been added in recent updates. And they're probably, uh, you know, the Goblin's best chance of breaking through. They're a tier 4 shock infantry. They've got the best chance of breaking through the Iron Guard line if they want any chance of victory in today's battle. But we'll see. Yes, we're here at Moria again. I feel like we often see Moria in a lot of videos, but... It's a fun map and people seem to love uh, recreating sort of like the defense of Moria by the dwarves. Balin's last stand. I'm going to actually check to see what the Balin's say. I, I know Dane's here for the uh, Iron Hills. Dane is uh, over there with the Sons of the Hill. Erebor's general is, in fact, Balin with the Durin's Guard. Um, so we do have um, Warriors of Ardoron, which is why we have uh, the Durin's Guard um, general for Balin instead of, um, instead of Mansion Reclaimers. We also have Shield Bearers of Belagost. And uh, Erebor, actually I don't know what Erebor acts is on, uh, anything new. And we also have Last Breath on as well, uh, of course, since we have the Iron Hills here. Uh, we, they are a Last Breath faction. Kind of forget that sometimes. We often see them so often, you kind of think Iron Hills are part of the main mod, but they're not. Yeah, Spear is still holding strong here, as are the Swords of the War. Like I said, this shock and victory of the Goblins here is nothing that impressive. They're going to need a lot more if they want to try and break through these Dwarvish lines. Yeah, this was sent in to me by a member of my uh, Discord, a sub, and he said that it was a fairly decent battle, you know, nothing like too impressive, but it was a fairly fun one, he said, on a, on a, uh, on this map, which is, you know, always, a, always fun to see a Moria map battle, and, uh, yeah, if you do have any replays yourself that you want to have sent in a bit like uh, this uh, sub did, then feel free to join my Discord, the link is down below in the description, I'm always looking for more TDD action at the moment, I'm a bit short on uh, replays, if you have any, do feel free to send them in to my server. These Dwarven Spears are getting shot for fun. This, is, I think, is going to be the best way for the Goblins to actually take out the Dwarves. It's just to shoot them. And these crossbows here, these scavenged crossbows, doing just exactly that. Doing a really good job of it as well. And yeah, the Dwarven Spears, they might want to just fall back, you know, just kind of like uh, sort of tilt in behind the battle line just so the Goblins can't get easy shots. But uh, I don't know, maybe that is not even worth it because crossbows can arc now. Yeah, with the crossbows being able to arc, that might make the cross, uh, these dwarves much harder to, uh, to defend themselves. I mean, crossbows not being able to arc will pretty much mean that the goblins can hit the, those dwarven defenders at any angle. 
kind of makes Mori a lot harder to defend. Uh, it used to be really easy because you needed archers, and usually the factions you played with historically they didn't have really great archers. Uh, goblins did, dwarves did not, but I guess that's actually probably a benefit to the dwarves now. They have really good uh, crossways themselves. Snarker Javi's here, jabbing away, also trying to put the final nail in the coffin of these dwarven spears. And this is obviously going to be a major target of interest here for the goblins. Is hitting this one dwarven spear right in the center. Uh, Snarker Javi's going in, now they have no ammo left. And uh, we're going to see Dwarven Warriors with a uh, tier 2 sword unit going in. They're going to try and sort of relieve the pressure in the center there of the line, I imagine. And yet Iron Guard also now being assaulted. As we have some of the Goblin Blade Warriors going in. Again, might be a decent sword unit, but not good enough to stop a tier 4 Ironclad Dwarf. They should impale plenty of these Goblins. I, I'm expecting these guys to get at least 200-300 kills. As long as they don't do anything silly, they should be fine. And so we have Iron Hill Warriors as well supporting. So yes, yeah, some really elite uh, dwarves there, that's for sure. And the same over here, looks like it's the same combo. Iron Hill uh, Warriors and Iron Guard, which are actually down at 76. Take more losses than I expected. Maybe because it's a shock infantry? Shock does like spears, but I would have thought that this spear is an exception. These guys are tough as nails. They really are these dwarves. One of the few, you could say, offensive spear units. Uh, there's Mordor Uruk here. Actually, probably could be doing a bit of damage to the uh, Iron Guard, especially if they keep falling them back, which seems to be the case. It's probably costing the uh, Iron Hills a fair few elite Iron Guard. But yeah, as you can see, a lot of bodies already mounting up. I mean, the Goblins have already lost a good 500, and the Dwarves, we have actually lost about 400 that's not a good ratio at all for the dwarves they need to sort that out they need to get some archers into play get archers across those into play start firing and there you go our night raiders and mountain marauders are starting to break now which is exactly what the, uh, the Dwarves need. And actually, there's been a bit of a breakthrough here. I don't know if they should have really. It looks like they pulled through. These Goblins, they pulled through for sure to get to uh, these guys. Dwarvish Spears are still holding the line quite happily. Another Dwarvish Spears had to come out of it. So yeah, you can see the Goblins and Blade Warriors breaking there. That's what you get for pulling through. You shouldn't really do it. Mount Marauders now going to go in, but they might get a bit of technically get a rear charge here onto the uh, Dwarven Spears, which might be pretty damaging. Or maybe not. Seems like they're maybe holding back. Airborne Axe Guards in here as well. So Airborne is throwing in some more elite troops, it seems. Why can't I hear... Oh, I was just thinking, why can't I hear horses? Because the wargs are in here, actually. I I can see their marker. Okay, they might have just gone in now. 70 out of 70. Yeah, I think they just popped uh, something now. Just to sort of hungry for blood. Yeah, so it gives a bit of a debuff. I think against Cav. I don't think it gives it anything against infantry. The Iron Guard, as expected, still holding strong. I honestly don't think they need the uh, the uh, the Iron Hill Warriors. They can send those, those elsewhere. Like I said, the Iron the Iron Guard are going to hold for a while, winning decisively against Mountain Warders. Keep sending those guys in; they'll deal with them happily. Uh, but yeah, Goblin Heavy Archers here, all obstructing each other. That's also good for the uh, for the Dwarves. But yeah, the Dwarves really need to bring forward archers of their own. Try and get rid of these guys. If they can just focus them down one at a time, gives themselves a chance. Problem with the defenders is it is hard to mass up your, your ranged units to try and do some damage. Crossbows also, yeah, like Iron Hill crossbows here. Could they maybe use those to get rear shots and stuff into other choke points? It's things they have, those are the sort of things they have to think about. They really do. We've got pole arms already going in. Two wardens already been sent in this battle. I mean, it's a very fast paced. Uh, siege it feels like this one a lot of the units be thrown in early I guess the dwarves don't have a lot of reserves elites will have to come forward a bit earlier being in a 3v2 I'd have thought maybe the dwarves have had more money maybe I don't know if they do necessarily so they can uh, spend you know uh, as much money necessarily as the as the attacks sort of match up a little bit better it looks like the two wardens are going in I would have thought that these Goblin Heavy Archers are about to probably start focusing them down if they can. It looks like Mountain Marauders are going to try and side charge them. Try and get a bit of a flank into that phalanx. Looks like, yeah, I mean, looks like they're doing okay for now. The two ones already lost one dwarf. They should be okay for now for a little while. 
Looks like we've got some shield pairs of Belagos. I feel like they're stacking up a little bit are the uh, Erebor Dwarves. It could maybe do with maybe falling back a few units, trying to, you know, stretch the line out a bit more with less troops. I think they can. I mean, the Dwarves are super elite. They usually can just do stuff like that. It's like same there. There's four units holding that uh, ground. Do they need all those there? I don't think so. Iron Hill Crossbows, they need to start firing, dealing with some of these archers, just try and get rid of them. Don't worry about saving ammo for, uh, for the trolls. You might, if you uh, don't play the game right, you can lose the game until trolls can come in. Like, if you lose, lose your pole arms, another, like, shock in the to archers, because you've not been shooting their archers, you might as well have lost the game there and then. So they should start using ammo. Yeah, these Mordor Uruks, they look like they're cycle charging the Iron Guard, and that, on this one here, seems like that's working in three. These Iron Guards are the most battered out of any of them, down to 59 out of 100. It seems like it is hurting uh, Mordor Uruks going in, but it doesn't seem like they care. Orc lives don't matter. And this is not good either. Look at this. Dwarves are breaking in a few areas. Actually, the two Mordors are falling back. How has this happened? Even though they were pretty strong here, I think they actually did pull back the shield bearers of Belagost here. And that's actually caused this flank to crumble a little bit. The Dwarven Warriors weren't able to hold the line. Clearly my advice is not good enough. And then, yeah, they can see the Dwarven Spears are uh, breaking as they, or something going to die and maybe break as they try and fall back. The two Warriors as well getting mowed down because they fell back. So a lot of these uh, casualties have been inflicted by a tactical withdrawal. And it looks like the Dwarves are now mustering more troops to come forward. Erebor axes, a lot of shock coming forward. Units that are going to be vulnerable to a uh, archer volley if one comes in. Not a lot of shielded units there. And those guys go. Yeah, I was going to say, say it's a terrible axe. It's not exactly a, an elite unit. And here comes Balin's guard, uh, Durand's guard. So Balin already being thrown in. Erebor really seems like he's on the ropes. Uh, Iron Hills might want to think about shifting over some warriors of Ered Mithrin, possibly. Maybe just to try and help hold that line. Because it seems like they're holding in most areas. This is potentially an issue, but it's not like they, uh, they can hold somewhere else. There's loads of choke points back here. And there's even a, a pike that's coming forward, a nine hill pike that's been thrown in. That's already lost 15 men somewhere. And it looks like uh, more iron hill pikes going around to stabilize the other side as well. But yeah, they need to start using ammunition to the dwarves. Um, they really do seem like they're lacking uh, on that front. And you and firing, they need to start firing more. Get those crossbows hot. Again, nothing's changed here. Like, this is what I mean. If you use the Iron Guards right and you don't get psychic charged too much, these Iron Guards will hold forever. They will hold till hell freezes over. I'm running for their lives. On the other hand, this is not looking so great. I mean, they kind of stabilized a bit. Looks like Erebor Axis, which only recently went in, already losing against Night Raiders of all things as well. Like, that's, that's not good. These Night Raiders are pretty terrible. There's the banner of Erebor standing high as they try and defend Kazadoo. Keep fighting, fighting for the deep of Moria. Let's see, they're trying to form up a little flanking uh, push here. Maybe the dwarves, maybe just trying to defend that flank. As you see, uh, maybe the goblins massing over there. We have Hive Chief Dane's guards moving forward. The goblins are starting to commit some of their elites as well. And the trolls are coming in. Uh, numbers wise, 7,500 against 2,600. I mean, the dwarves are killing a lot of goblins, uh, granted. But are they killing them quickly enough? I'm not sure. Here come the crossbows. They need to start firing into these trolls, start mowing them down. These mountain trolls, then they've got nothing on the Olakai. They, can, they can't soak up an archer volley that well. They'll take one or two, but then after one or two, they'll drop. So, yeah. The dwarves need to start machine gunning down these trolls, and that will help the balance power out a lot if they kill those guys off. Uh, trolls are on this side as well. They might have a bit more joys. There's no crossbows here, but pikes are also being shunted forwards. How much reserves is still outside? Oh, goblins still have a fair amount out here. Still at least two troll units. A lot of shock as well. Uh, there's a couple of generals as well out here as well. So yeah, still a lot to be committed on that front. A lot to be committed. Crossbow still firing it. I personally feel like maybe the uh, goblins should have brought less range just so they were then even with the uh, 
with the, with the dwarves on that front. I think that makes it a bit fair. I think, like, you know, goblins can bring a, as much mass infantry as they like. The dwarves can deal with that. It's the missile advantage that I think is the problem. If there's to balance the fight out a little bit more. I can see Balin. He's in the front line. Can he get a kill? Can he get a kill with his Druid guard? Let's see if the old dwarf still got any any energy left in him. Evidently, it seems so. He fights for his new reclaimed land. He pulls his reclaimed. He's going deep in enemy lines. Look at him. He's absolutely charging in there. They've lost four men so far. These Durin guard are hard to kill. One of that Warriors of Arda unit, and they're really tough. Two ones are losing. We're interested to see how many kills they get at the end of the game. It's, it's in the help that they've uh, been pulled back a few times. It's cost them a few men. Uh, already mountain trolls. They're still actually okay at the moment, numbers wise. I imagine those chevrons may be helping with health and armor. Maybe a little bit, and certainly maybe melee attack. It seems like the trolls maybe coming in there as well it is helping the eye, uh, helping defeat these iron guards. Now lose them slightly. So yeah, if anything, more important now than ever to shoot down those trolls. Here come the pikes. Get their pikes out. Start pike pushing, boys. You got to start pike pushing and killing these trolls. Uh, no pikes. No pikes in sight. What are you doing? Not good, not good. Get the pikes out, boys, and start killing them. Iron Guard's here down to 39 out of 100. 38 now, dropping pretty quickly. And uh, they're losing, yeah. And there you go, pikes are up. That'll slow that advance down very quickly there. They need to bring up something like a, uh, a crossbow, something to try and machine gun their way through. Those mountain trolls are losing, and they've already lost one. So, And the other one also looks like has lost one as well, and losing. That one's losing decisively. So yeah, there you go. This is the difference when uh, you get crossbows involved. You can easily machine gun down those trolls. Balin is going to need some help here. It looks like Pharaoh's coming in. Whether that's going to break the spirit of the dwarves, I don't know. I'll probably send forward this Iron Hill Pike as well because I think it's... If they lose here, the dwarves, it's pretty much over. And it looks like Dane's also shifted here as well. I would probably start thinking about getting ready to send a little bit more stuff forward soon. Um, I think you could possibly hold back the the troll push here. If you could kill the trolls off, these iron guards should probably stabilize again. 55 is still a, a hefty amount of iron guards. Whether the trolls are trying to pull through, if they are, that's fine. I think we're trying to maybe get through to the cross. We're trying to silence them. If so, that's a not a bad move, but it looks like having no joy at the moment. Just shoot these trolls. Just shoot the trolls crossbows. You can't miss at that angle. Apparently they obstructed. I don't know if that's an issue. Yeah, the trolls are winning now. They've lost two of them. But yeah, they need to turn that around. They need to start shooting pretty quickly to these, uh, these dwarven crossbows. Otherwise, they're going to be the next meal on the menu. And if they break through here, I mean, this could potentially become the, the real concern here. It is looking pretty bad. Uh, might need to send something forward. Or just yeah, try and reshuffle the crossbows. Maybe try and get them to fire. Uh, there you go, dropping to six, losing as soon as they shoot those crossbows. Trolls go from winning to losing. There you go, five out of eight. These guys, yeah, this is the problem that the trolls have. Little and no armor. And all of a sudden, uh, I mean, that choke point is a little better. You keep shooting them down. Each dwarf loss, there's a massive loss for the good cause. Again, falling back the uh, the pole lines. It looks like a general retreat is actually being called here by the uh, by the dwarves. Again, it's a bit of a risky move because if anything, you're just allowing. I mean, look like this. The two mordens have been caught out, been cut off from retreating. They're probably going to get cut down here, I think. These elite pikemen or pole arms kind of just yeah, being left to left to die here, really. I mean, they'll fight till they can fight to the last man. I don't think they will this time. 11 of them left, wavering. Yeah, I mean, we've got units on the flank here. Balin's uh, Durin's guard and also some spears and pole lines trying to hold the flanks as the Iron Hill Pikes are standing in the center. But they'll just be easy pickings for the archers. So, I mean, I feel like they were better off holding where they were originally. Yeah, these pikes are just going to get focused down by all the goblin archers further on. It's a problem. 
you don't take out their archers, then the goblins use those archers on that uh, get more important stuff. They don't need to shoot your crossbows necessarily. They just got to kill your pole arms and your pike. Because they're the things that are defending the choke point. Dwarves here have now sent an even more shock to try to kill these uh, trolls. Numbers wise, it's 5,000 against 1,400. I mean, it's not impossible for the Dwarves to win this, but it's looking tough. They're going to need a general death soon. Like the Goblins will. If the Dwarves are turn this around. The sea of metal here. Holding back these trolls. The trumpet like elephants. Looks like they're sending maybe more shock around here. Yeah, they're sending a um, Warriors very missile. It seems like the pikes were no match actually to Baron trolls. They killed a couple of them. It seems like the trolls still have to knock them out of the way. They're like they were just, I don't know, toys. Barlin looking very bloodied up in there. He's got his sword out. His bodyguard's still with him. He's got a few pole arms to help him. Hold the line, dwarves. For Durin and his kin. Who's looking forward here? Oh, it's terrible crossbows. I mean... They look like they got, yeah, plenty of ammo. I wouldn't send those in just yet. I mean, Aerobo, yeah, spent a lot of money on his uh, crossbows, bizarrely, but not on so much on his infantry. Bit odd, a bit of an odd choice, I'll admit. I would have just spent less money on the crossbows because they might not necessarily get all their ammo off. I mean, these Aerobo crossbows have gone into melee. I mean, they kind of need to. The spear line's about to break, but they're not going to hold much longer. They're already losing decisively. What? Yeah, and now he's pulling back. Uh, Barlin and he's also pulling back the pole arms letting the crossbows go to melee they have full ammo pretty much these crossbows here and they're going to not get to use it all or any of it really it's only a matter of time until the pikes break here the crossbows are point blank shooting these guys and we're going to see goblin bodyguard charge in they're just going to ignore the pipeline or try to they look like they've been stopped a bit for now whether they're going to just keep cycle charging they might yeah, I mean, look, every volley of crossbow fire here is just dropping one or two more dwarves. Just a battle of attrition. Trolls still haven't really made much progress, admittedly. I think they're now having to see the uh, Goblin Bodyguard go in. Yeah, they, they've been set in to try and break through here. Dane's also in here as well. He's he's losing fighting these Bodyguard. I think it's also just those fresh Trolls in her, actually. I don't think the, uh, yeah, the Trolls hadn't at all died from the first wave. This is the, the newer ones. Again, the Crossbows should really be probably focusing them down. I don't think Dane can hold back this mass of Goblins. But if you can kill the Trolls off, that's something, I guess. Bad's power is really not looking good now for the Dwarves. 4,800 against 5,000... Uh, sorry, against uh, 550. The general has fallen. Our victory grows ever nearer. And they go, that's Balin falling, and actually that's causing the mass drought here uh, for Erebor. Erebor is going to drop out of this game. The Dwarves are not looking good. They're not looking in any good shape. Iron Hill crossbows are being sent over here to try and maybe slow down the enemy. Uh, they're not, probably not going to hold for long against swords. But I guess they're maybe just trying to hold on to allow Dane to get a couple more kills here and there. A gap has been found in the line. It definitely is a legit gap as well. And as you can see, the goblins are going behind Mordor Urux. Now trying to silence these crossbows. And with these crossbows being silenced, that's just any last threat to the, uh, the trolls being ended. Looks like the, uh, the crossbows already turned to try and 
deal with these goblin bodyguards that are pushing forward. I don't think the they're going to even stop them either. This is a shameful display. What else we got in here? Aaron Mithra for veterans, yeah, nearly dead. Day nine foot, yeah, he's on his way out as well. Crossbows over here, getting some shots off on those gobos. Fire as quickly as you can, lads, because they're about to get eaten by goblins. They're coming for dwarven flesh. And they're coming for your jewels as well. Keep volleying, but yeah, they're about to get silenced crossbows. They might get one more volley off. Yeah, like a couple of them did. In point blank range, they can't miss his high chief Dane's guards. There you go, not bad, and then hitting his goblin bodyguard as well, yeah. That's uh, the end of those guys there as they mass over the, uh, over the dormant infantry. I think that's, uh, yeah, there you go, a mass trial. I don't know if Diet Dane fell, but I think he routed, and that's caused... Uh, the rest of the Iron Hill army to also rout as well. And there we go. We have a Pyrrhic victory for the goblins. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's even a, a Pyrrhic one. But uh, numbers in the end did just do uh, the amount. I think if the dwarves had a third army, I think it would have been a much closer game. But they did still pretty well, even for having one less army. The goblins have reclaimed Moria for themselves. They can uh, start to make it all horrible and evil once again. Uh, we'll have a quick look at some of the kills. This was sent in by um, Sino Kias, who was playing as the goblins. So thank you very much, man, for sending this one in. His army, uh, I mean, his mountain marauders here, you can see they just spam these guys out. I mean, 115 kills with one is not too bad against... Uh, Dwarves. I mean, he's not going to have massives of kills because there's one less dwarven army, and also you're fighting dwarves, which have smaller units. But one of his archers, one of his crossbows, sorry, got 146 kills. His trolls, 88 and 79. Then we have Rolexiski uh, playing as the uh, second goblin army. His uh, chief Dane's guards getting 166, 168, 123 kills. His bodyguard, 166 kills, uh, and then his. Uh, Crossbow's getting 135 kills and his trolls 21. Then we have Son of Imladris playing as the final goblin army. 109 kills with his goblin blade warriors here. 104 with the Hive Chieftain's guards. Uh, his trolls 126 kills. Then we have Reckless Athenian playing as the Iron Hills. 227 kills with Dane before he fell. 216 with the Iron Hill warriors here. 214 with another one there. And then he's got Aramith from Veterans, 163 kills, 209 with the Iron Guards, 279, 185, all getting pretty great kills for those spears, as you'd expect. Iron Hill Pikes, 144 kills. And then we have Ironside Bjorn playing as Erebor, 236 kills with Balin's Guard, 164 kills with the Dwarven Warriors here, 160, 239, 268 with the uh, Shield Bearers of Belagost, his Erebor Axe Guards getting 185 kills. Uh, all his Dwarven Spears, you know, for Tier 2, all getting pretty good kills as well, 129, 122. 112. The uh, two Wardens got 252 kills, which is not too bad. And I felt like they kind of got poorly used. They got pulled back quite a bit um, and lost quite a lot of troops unnecessarily. And then they have the Arable Crossbows, 286 kills. One of them got, and the other got 132. So even though they didn't use up a lot of ammo, still got a decent amount of kills, it seems. But there you go, guys. That is the day's Dawnless Day's Siege Battle. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're on here, and comment show your support. And I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye for now.